Hey everyone, this is Eric Keller with ZBrush Jewelry Workshop and I wanted to create a short video that shows how I'm using some of the new tools in ZBrush 2022 to develop this uh, honeybee ring that I'm making. So this is a ring, it's still in development, still working it out. I got some renders right here. These are key shot renders, so this has not been printed or cast yet, still kind of developing it. But you know, I wanted to take advantage of some of these cool new tools. Uh, in the development of this ring. The ring itself is actually inspired by some footage, which you may have seen, um, time-lapse footage that Nat Geo created of honeybees uh, developing in the honeycomb. So this is just a little, uh, little bit of the footage right here. You can find this on YouTube. It's really amazing footage, very inspiring, somewhat adorable. So I wanted to create a ring that kind of encapsulated that sort of bee development and then of course i put pretty flowers on it and that kind of stuff so let's start by talking about how i made little bee faces in the honeycomb on the ring itself and to do this i used the bar relief tools to make an alpha that i could use to stamp with a brush in these little areas so um, there's a couple different ways you can use bar relief this is just one of them I've, i decided this has worked best for this particular project uh, so, of course, the first thing I need is a model to make the alpha from. So, I do happen to have B models um, because I do a lot of animations involving insects. So, this is a model that I've, I've had for a number of years. Um, I created originally, I'm going to plug my other main project, which is Entomology Animated. So, I have a website called Entomology Animated that talks about various aspects of insect physiology. So, this is a little B model I made for one of these animations. So uh, I decided to use that for this project. So what I did is uh, I took a version of this and I kind of just focused on the parts that I need, which is the head and the antenna. And I posed the antenna so that they're kind of wrapping around the face here like that. And then I wanted a little bit of the thorax in the background. Don't need too much of it though. Once I sort of adjusted the model to have just the parts that I need, I uh, went into the document palette and let me set this to a square. So I'm going to set this to 1024 by 1024. Hit resize. It's going to give me a warning. I'll choose yes. I'm going to press Control N to clear the window. Draw my model onto the canvas. Press T for edit mode. Let's go into the document palette. Zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole document. And then I'm going to press F to frame and just pick a nice framing for my alpha. And I don't want it to be too perfect. I want it to be slightly imperfect so it looks a bit more organic. Okay, so once I have my sort of pose figured out or my view figured out, I'm going to go into the alpha palette and down here I'm going to expand the new bar relief menu. So this is what's been added in 2022. I have a number of options here. I'm gonna just stick with the default for the moment and choose make bow relief. And after a few seconds, it is going to make an alpha. Now you can apply this alpha to any of the brushes, the sculpting brushes, but I'm gonna keep it on the standard brush and I'm gonna set the stroke type to drag rect. I'm gonna press O for the focal shift and set the focal shift to negative 100. Press U for Z intensity. Let's just pump this up just a little bit. Let's try something like 39 or something like that. And then I'll go back to an earlier version of the ring. Essentially just drag this out. And there's my bar relief. Now I wanted to adjust it a little bit because this is kind of flat. And I'll make it look a little bit more three dimensional. So after I've drawn it on here, uh, what I can do is I can go into the stroke palette and choose adjust last. Bring this up a little bit and it's just going to pump up that last stroke the whatever the last change points in my surface are so i can bring this up or down either way maybe i'll pump it up just a little bit like that and then i went in with the sculpting brushes and just a little bit of cleanup and kind of pulled out the center here so for example i'm going to choose move elastic and bring my draw size up a little bit Hold the Alt key and just pull this so that it pulls it out a little bit. Holding the Alt key means that it's going to move based on the normals of the surface as opposed to just the camera direction, right? So if I hold the Alt key, pull up like that. Just want a little bit of roundness there. You know, if you've done too much, that's the last stroke. So I can go in here to the stroke palette again 
and play with adjust last to really dial in exactly what I want. Another great new feature. That one I think was in 2021.7 though. Um, who's keeping track? Doesn't really matter. So that's how I did a little B face. And go in here and do some more. Get the uh, standard brush. And draw another one on here. And, you know, just keep repeating that until I had them all filled or the ones that I wanted filled. Um, the other thing that's cool about this, of course, is maybe I don't want all my B faces to be facing the same direction. I want a little bit of variation to make it look, or look organic. Well, I'll just go back to that same B model and choose a slightly different angle. Something where the Ocelli are a bit more obvious. All right? And go into Alpha and choose Make Bar Relief. And then I have another Alpha in here. So if I open up the Alpha palette, you can see I have these variations. So I could save these out and use them 100 times if I want to. It's a great way to create a little B face brush. And I go back to my uh, model back to my model here and choose another one of these cells. Draw this on here and now I have kind of a different view. So I have a little bit of variation there. And I'm just going in and do some cleanup. Very cool. I'm really excited about how this ring is coming along. I cannot wait to print it and also cast it. So I'll keep you guys up to date on the progress on this ring as well as some other tips and tricks on how I develop these projects. But of course, you're going to want to like this video and you're going to want to subscribe to the ZBrush Jewelry Workshop uh, YouTube channel so that you can get updates from both me and Tomas and the other folks at the workshop. Um, and also remember to visit our website. Members get a lot more intensive videos and courses, as well as lots of cool assets they can download and use in their own jewelry projects. So check out ZBrushJewelryWorkshop.com, uh, learn about membership and all the benefits, and see what we have to offer. And until then, we'll see you next time.